question from United for Social Justice for the Utah Minutemen Project. How can you uncritically support what you call rule of law when U.S. law has supported racist agendas such as slavery, the destruction of American Indians, the illegal U.S. invasion of Mexico, Jim Crow, segregation, and the Chinese Exclusion Act? That's a deep part of our history. It's a dark part. And I personally will admit that. The slavery issue, and I'll tackle that one because that's the one I'm quite familiar with, actually was a worldwide issue uh, back in 1789. People were trying to get rid of it. But it was going to be proving to be a long length of time. It took almost 50 years for England to divest itself of slavery. The main reason was it was such a part of their economy that they felt it would have been that it would have been uh, a threat to their national security. You used to have groups that would go around saying, "Well, we're not going to take in sugar because we know that you know, one lump of sugar would contain a person's blood because that was the way it was made." Slaves died. It took over 400 years to transport into the United States or North American continent from Africa uh, 12 million people. And it took, that, as I said, a length of time for the English government to get rid of it. The right way they got rid of it was to begin to make the merchants responsible, begin to make the merchants the profits that they were making, but they would lose them. And that, that's how they finally got rid of it. The movement came over to the United States and eventually came up through the abolitionist movement to the 1960s. And then we fought a war uh, that contained that as an issue. It was also part of the founding fathers. They had to deal with it when they were making a constitution and they were thinking about the Declaration of Independence because there was a part of that that wanted to maintain that for the social and economic economy. The same argument was there without slavery. Who's going to provide you with your rum and your sugar? And we hear that same problem today. United for Social Justice has one minute to respond. Well, this gives me the opportunity to talk about my favorite founding father, Thomas Paine. Um, it's not an argument that everybody else is doing something horrific and terrible. Uh, and therefore, we are alleviated of it. But also, it's not an accurate claim. Um, Thomas Paine left the United States for the French Revolution. And in um, uh, 1793, uh, well, 1789 through 1793, they issued the Universal Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen. Again, uh, not necessarily progressive in the feminist sense, but they declared that all men were equal. And they meant it. And for a brief period in which the radical Jacobin government was in power, again, this is 1793. This is right around, right around the time the Constitution was uh, written with the deplorable three fifths. The Haitian slaves were free, and they were received as heroes in Paris. That is the sort of attitude and action we need to have towards immigrants today: universal equality, universal rights. Given that you advocate open borders, anyone can come. Everyone has a right because of we are all just accidents of birth here in the United States. What limits, if any, would you put on the illegal alien violation of our nations and people's sovereignty? Where would you draw the line in terms of how many billions of people you feel is just great to migrate to the United States? Who in the world doesn't have the equal right to occupy a place in our country? Well, that's a very interesting question. Of course, there's a false presupposition. We have open borders, and there are no illegal immigrants, because they don't be legalized. So there's that. But also, um, again, this is our conception. Uh, the conception of sovereignty held traditionally through the nation state is one of the king. And the king takes territory, and the king holds the territory, and it's the body of the king, the sovereign. 
Well, we've lopped off the top of the head of the king and we've replaced it with the federal government. But our conception of property is still, and sovereignty is one of that, a uh, throwback to a dirty and ugly monarchical system. So what I would say is whoever lives in an area, whoever works in the area, whoever has family in the area, has a right to have a say in the area. And that includes uh, you know, families that go back to the, uh, you know, the founding fathers and uh, you know, the Plymouth Pilgrims, to uh, the six-month-old uh, family in you know, East LA that is just uh, straight out of Chihuahua. Our conception of who we are should be who is in our community, who, who works with us, who lives with us, who plays with us, who goes to school with us. And that is a conception far different from the outmoded notion, uh, notion of the nation state. Real quick, I'd just like to say, in all the countries, almost all the countries I visited, uh, one uh, is Iraq, for example. On the Iraqi border with Syria, Syrians come across the border into Iraq, Iraqis go across the border to Syria, they trade, they work together, and those are connections that have existed uh, for hundreds and even thousands of years. So the Ottomans came and created some borders, the British came and created colonial borders and drew a line between Iraq and Syria, but there was, that never was able to prevent that natural intercourse between the two peoples who were connected um, economically, geographically, culturally, linguistically, etc. So there's always going to be that movement of peoples, even if later on, long after that movement of peoples has been going on, you try to uh, place a border and stop that flow from happening. It's just you can't do it. Neither do I believe that nations should not have borders. There was no problem with people uh, across the border of Mexico coming and, and working, doing it legally or even kind of kind of illegally, until life, as Mr. Lucero pointed out so obviously due to NAFTA and some other issues, became much more difficult. So that millions and millions of people started pouring across that southern border. 20% uh, of Mexico's population is now in the United States. And yet we are told by the opposition we don't have a right to defend our homeland, we don't have a right to defend our people, defend, defend our families, defend our country. We have men who fought and died for that flag. We are the only nation on the face of the planet that fought a bloody civil war to put an end to slavery, something that I don't think the adversary, our adversaries want to give us credit for. So. The last question from uh, United Social Justice to the Utah Midnight Project. As of January 10th, you say that the United States is founded as a Christian nation. Yet how do you reconcile the fact that you seek to deny aid to needy immigrant mothers and children when taking care of the poor is a fundamental tenet of the teachings of Jesus. Woo! Amen. 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 Uh, in the first place, I'm assuming that when he says immigrant here, he means legal presence in the United States. So I'm not an advocate of denying a to needy immigrant uh, children and mothers. Uh, in fact, the United States spends more money per capita than any other country taking care of the poor, taking care of the needy. All you have to do is go over here to, to uh, the uh, Utah Welfare Office and they lay out the golden carpet for you. And not only that, they don't even ask for ID most of the time, from what I understand. I'm just joking about that. It's not a joke. So, we don't deny, and I'm not in favor of denying aid to immigrants, because immigrant implies legality. I am, however, I do, however, have a real problem with providing aid to illegal aliens who have no part of this social compact. 